November 1917, Holzminden, Germany's most secure POW camp. 20 Allied officers planned to dig a tunnel right under the noses of their German captors and escape. One hundred years after the start of the First World War, Holzminden is still in use by the German army. Following a methodical reconnaissance, the location chosen for the start of the tunnel was in the cellars of Barracks B, below the orderlies' quarters. The closest point to the perimeter wall only 10 metres away. Saul and Michael are going to see the tunnel entrance first hand. The officers needed to keep their covert tunnelling operation from the prying eyes of the German guards. So here it is, Michael. Am I right in thinking that during the tunnelling, there would have been a wooden partition here, and also here, so that when they're working in there, nobody can see them? Yes, right. The first major obstacle was how to break through the concrete foundations of the barracks. For this, they used an improvised chisel and some sulfuric acid obtained from a bribed civilian workman to melt the steel reinforcement rods. They could now start tunnelling. <laughs> to reach freedom, the 20 men would have to dig a distance of over 10 metres. Working at depths of up to three metres, the tunnelling conditions were extreme. The tunnel was just large enough to admit a man's body lying flat, there being no headroom for crawling on hands and knees. <coughs> you had to wriggle or worm your way along it, and working your way backwards to escape the tunnel, obviously there was no room to turn round, proved even more time-consuming. <coughs> it was difficult to become accustomed to the feeling of being buried alive when working at the tunnel face. Digging was done, and terribly hard work it was, being so cramped. An hour and a half was about as much as one could stand. The officers worked in groups of threes between the 9am and 5pm roll calls. <coughs> Without access to mining tools, they had to rely on their improvisational skills and ingenuity. <coughs> no patent gadgets were used at all. We dug with table knives where there was soil and progged about with a cold chisel and bits of rake through the stone. They were pretty tough in their early 20s, or very early 20s, very young and pretty resilient. A generation where you just got on with it. I mean, amazing, amazing tenacity to... Uh, and they just wanted to get home, you know. They really, really wanted to get home, I think. <laughs> 